Hello, I'm Ruth Stewart. I'm the National Rural Health Commissioner and I have a very great interest in the future of e-health in Australia. That interest is both professional and personal. So professionally, I really want to see the access that rural and remote people have to healthcare improved. And I know that e-health can step into the gaps in access uh, that exist at the moment. I really want to see though that the provision of e-health is never to replace high quality, face-to-face, -face, engaged continuity of care, primary care. And I feel really quite alarmed when I hear statements that suggest that maybe that's an option. No. If it's not an option for the mainstay of healthcare in Sydney or Melbourne to be via video conference, then it should not be an option in rural and remote Australia. Rural and remote Australians deserve high quality care that is personal and respons responsive to their needs and context. I also, I also have a personal story to tell you um, about how electronic healthcare can provide really high quality care close to home that would not be otherwise possible. In 2016, uh, just as I was elected president of the Australian College of Rural and Remote Medicine, I was diagnosed with a lymphoma that was uh, very aggressive. Um, I was told that I had to start um, chemotherapy immediately. Um, that's not the kind of message you ignore. Things were looking a bit grim at the beginning and most of my family, um, apart from my husband and I, at that time were in Victoria. I've got siblings all around uh, rural Victoria and our kids were all in various, at various stages of education um, and employment in Melbourne. So I chose to go to Melbourne so that I could have as much time as I possibly could with the children and my siblings um, and my husband came down with me. Um, I started my the chemotherapy um, in a large tertiary centre that gave excellent care, but it was a long way from my home. Uh, I am very fortunate that I responded well to, uh, to the chemotherapy. I didn't have many complications. Um, and also uh, the lymphoma melted away. So after two cycles, I was looking around going, uh, you know, guys, I'm feeling pretty good. Can I go home now? Um, and, you know, it was obvious, it, well, it seemed fairly likely that I wasn't going to die at that stage, the thought that has been um, shown to be on track. So I began to uh, negotiate to have my chemotherapy on Thursday Island, which is home. Um, it took a little bit of time to organise, so uh, but I, I, we returned home and uh, the third cycle I did the return trip to that excellent urban centre in Melbourne. The return trip meant that I caught a bus, a ferry, a bus, a plane, over, spent an overnight in Cairns and caught two planes down to Melbourne and had a taxi ride at the other end, stayed overnight with my mother-in-law and then went in to the um, major hospital to have the chemotherapy. And then some days later did the return trip. Now some of you will know how 
um, exhausting it is when you have a cancer and particularly when you're having chemotherapy that's a long trip uh, but I yeah you, you do what you have to but as I said I'd begun to negotiate uh, to return home now North Queensland has uh, quite a history of telechemotherapy. Um, I just happened to be on a rather complex uh, chemotherapy regime, but um, the haematologist in Cairns with some tutelage from the um, wonderful Professor Sabe Sabason from Townsville was prepared to give it a go. And so I had the last two, uh, no, the last three cycles of RCHOP, it's called, rituximab cyclophosphamide, sorry, cyclophosphamide, hyacine, oncovan, and prednisolone on Thursday Island. How did it happen? Well, we'd start with um, on Monday morning, I would be down in pathology as soon as it opened I'd have a blood test that test would be reported to the oncologist the hematologist in Cairns Tuesday morning I would have I would go into the general practice in Camperdown and I would um, participate in a video conference with the hematologist in Cairns with my GP on Thursday Island uh, they would talk about my test results and um, the GP would conduct any physical examination that the haematologist wanted. And once the haematologist had satisfied um, himself that I was um, responding well, that I was well enough to have another um, round of chemotherapy, uh, he would order the chemotherapeutic chemothera agents to be sent on the, the afternoon plane to Thursday Island where um, the uh, one of the um, renal nurses who had had some training in oncology um, uh, prepared those agents under um, video conferenced supervision of the oncology nurse in in Cairns I would walk the 150 meters from my home to the renal dialysis unit having slept in my own bed eaten at my own breakfast table um, and i would sit in the renal dialysis unit um, video conferencing with the oncology nurse um, while uh, while the connections were, you know the intravenous strips were inserted and the um, preliminary medications were given and then the oncology nurse and the renal dialysis uh, nurse on Thirst Island would between them monitor me during that infusion um, and then when it was over um, I could walk home If you can imagine the difference that made to me, um, I'm, I'm glad because it made a huge difference. I would really like to see an expansion of that kind of model of care right across Australia, and it is possible. It's all that is required is a flexibility of imagination, being able to imagine how things can be done differently so that the focus is on delivering care as close to home as possible and meeting the requirements and wishes of the patient. I'll leave you with that. Thank you and looking forward to an eHealth enabled future.